Can I invite everybody um, here, all of the speakers? So, thank you all. Um, maybe a question to the, to the three of you to begin with. Um, were there any parallels? Were there any things you noticed? Like, oh, you're also thinking or working on that. Katia, you're already nodding. Yeah, I think uh, uh, the experiments, your experiments with the post laboratory were uh, quite interesting. Uh, ex yeah, experiments in this post labor world that we we try to imagine or dream about sometimes. Um, yeah. yeah, you mean with um, actually um, how do I say this? Um, where you don't have to do manual or well, labor anymore. Um, yeah. yeah. But then also in the end that we that it's always a uh, uh, delegating work to another. So this is I think this comes back like yeah throughout other um, uh, projects. Um, so it's always like, okay. So where do we delegate the work to, and what is the other person that we delegate, or other machine or technology that we delegate the work to? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go further into labor and maybe the division with uh, work. But maybe if. Uh, a question before we go into that. We are talking about the future of work, but how far in the future are we looking? And or is it actually now the the yeah the the nowness, the, the contemporary ways we are handling work? Are we really yeah? How far in the future are we looking? Um, well, uh, I would say uh, I chose uh, to present this, which is kind of uh, present oriented, also because I think the discussion on the future of work is in itself ideological, somehow. Mm -hmm. And uh, by saying already future of work, you push like a sort of imagination, no? Which can be dystopian, utopian, but you push it out like and uh, sort of remove this kind of uh, uh, sort of mundane aspects of, uh, uh, of like uh, con current, uh, today's work. And, uh, my choice of speaking about this is also a bit to quest to challenge the notion of like future work as like pushing it back, who knows when. Mm -hmm. Also me? Yeah, I think it's for the three of us what we all talked about. It's happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I, for example, chose um, sp yeah to speculate or to design a speculative office to help people actually to imagine. Because when I talk with people about right now, it's very hard to imagine. I think there's like a, a gap in culture, but also knowledge about technological possibilities. So when talking about the very near future, even though maybe it's already reality here, it very much helps to start a discussion. To create a little bit of distance. Yeah, and okay. also to a distance on one side helps you again to start to think about yourself. Otherwise, people tend, like in the discussions I have, people tend to go on an abstract level and to talk about the others and other workers and to, to get this topic away from themselves or to escape the questions. And um, by asking them about how would your life look like in 20 years from now, it's much easier to, to question things. Why do you think it's so difficult for people to think about this? Why is, why is it so confrontational then? Mm, I, I don't know, I can just... <laughs> yeah, there are two things. One is like my personal view, but also I think the working culture we have right now, it's already 200 years old. And like the idea of selling your own labor or the separation of tasks. And um, I think it's... There are different aspects, but it's really embedded in our culture and the way um, we grew up. It's um, not only culture, it's also embedded in religion, in like so many different ideologies, ideas, um, constructs um, we all grew up with. Mm -hmm. Do you recognize this, that it's so culturally embedded, our relationship to work? Yes, Katia, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, um, um, I was thinking different things about it, like, but, but, but the, uh, for instance, the, the words that we use, um, uh, also around this field of labor, um, like, 
one of the things we were also discussing in a, a program that we started is on, on the notion of burnout. And actually we found uh, that burnout is, is one of these words that is very uh, locally uh, and culturally embedded and doesn't exist in, in all cultures because um, in some countries people are, um, like during leisure time, they still talk a lot about work with their friends. Um, while in other countries they also use this leisure time maybe uh, more productively? No. Uh, more productively <laughs> in leisuring, yes. It's absolutely. confusing, right? So, yes, yeah, this achievement society is even, yes, yes. yes. Um, yeah, maybe um, just on the philosophical note, because in your talk, Anthony, we talk about the division between labor and work. Um, I, one would almost think that um, labor is this tedious thing that is actually not good for our minds, and work would be the thinking uh, aspect or the more enriching aspect. Is that actually uh, is is there a clear, clear division actually between those two? No. I would say no. Uh, I, for myself, I can't divide. I think in each activity we do, there are both aspects, and it's very fluid. And I think it's again connected to what I, what we talked about before, that each activity can be either have more of the labor aspect or more of the work aspect. I just tried to use these two terms to make it easier to, to understand. And of course, it's much more complex, and you cannot really divide, but I think t in order to start a discussion about the topic, it helps to to think of a division. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Silvio, no. <laughs> in many, um, I think uh, the Trita Talks in many ways went about also the individual working and the individual working space. Are they, or is it also about are we more individualistic in our work now, or is there actually, or or the social, is the social just changing? Silvio. Uh, yeah, uh, well, I, I I was um, speaking of like the f the first question, like this, uh, let's say the res resonation between the talks. I was like really seeing a connection that speaks of also individuality <coughs> in the in the Yoko in the Ono Yoko Ono and Lennon band. So. Um, I mean, of course, they were protesting, right? Uh, but at the si uh, same time, you could say that a bit like some of the works of some Fiverr, they were just like using their body to perform, no? Uh, and there is actually not so much difference between like the two modes of uh, uh, of like uh, performing, of like uh, working, if you if if you if you will. Uh, now. Uh, I think, like in this case, it's like well, what is put to use is also like the individual space in which uh, in which you perform. So, like in this case, in this scenario, and uh, in the case of uh, Ono and Lennon, like the the, ba the bed. Uh, yeah. So, so I think like this speaks a lot about. Uh, but uh, regarding to the fragmentation, like the in, um, if, if you say like, are we more individualistic? I I think we are immersed in in the social, no? Like. The social is everywhere. So um, I would say that, uh, like, actually, there is a problem of not being able to isolate properly. I mean, uh, my feeling is that it's not that we are isolated from each other. We are immersed with each other. We can't isolate in a good, uh, like, in, in a proper and fulfilling and gratifying way. So this is ideas I'm struggling with a bit. But uh, And what do you mean I, by in a proper or...? How do you mean isolating a well, example? Uh, like a contemp con contemporary office work, for example, always requires like a sort of performance of uh, of uh, of your persona, of your character, like by sociality, by interaction, uh, and it's very hard to retreat. Even like the spaces for the way are structured, I ask for openness, collaboration, so. This is the kind of uh, limit uh, uh, to isolation that I see. So I, I'm thinking, like, to put it as a question, I'm thinking, is there something positive in isolation? Is there something useful in isolation, in a proper isolation, which would be a, a bit like a monk one, like mm -hmm. you know, a monastic one? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Did I lean on something? Maybe, no. yes. OK. <laughs> I mustn't lean on my yeah, device. Um, 
Well, we, we spoke briefly on the social uh, change now, but also, Katia, in your talk, <coughs> you um, does technology actually reinforce gender roles or social structures we have right now, for example, eh, from the kitchen from the 70s you showed, um, but maybe even on, on Fiverr, maybe um, some kind of social structures are not really, let's say, changed, but actually reinforced by technology. Um, Katia, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I think also in your example, you see that they become very um, visible as well. So um, I think like existing social structures or roles that already exist or um, um, yeah, uh, behaviors that are already there, they uh, sometimes there are these glitch moments or these errors like um, when, when these, yeah, for instance, in your example, when it becomes very visible. Uh, and um, in that sense, the technology also reveals a bit of the bias that is underneath it, or the, like the, um, yeah, the human labor that is actually behind, of course, the, the programming and uh, yeah. the data. Yeah. So we mustn't really expect that technology will actually take over or help us socially. It's still something we need to do ourselves. It's a lot of work, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe um, you spoke of it already briefly, <coughs> but uh, actually you're working together on a project. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, we uh, invited Silvio uh, uh, yeah, to work with us because we also collaborate with the uh, uh, Piet Swart um, Institute, the, the Master for Experimental Publishing, um, on a project uh, on burnout. Um, so actually, like some of the questions that um, that we explored through the Work Body Leisure project uh, in relation to labor conditions that are changing, um, and also like in our own environment, we were confronted a lot with this this notion of burnout. Actually, um, like even in our office, and um, um, and we were very interested in the notion exactly as it, it when we, we when we spoke about it, like everyone uh, seemed to have a story, but also. Uh, it seemed that in other countries this this uh, notion of burnout doesn't exist. Um, and what do you and mean by other countries? Are we then talking about... Uh, sorry, outside of the Netherlands in this case. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's, and you don't mean necessarily, yeah. for example, non-European or non-Western non European or... Yeah, also, so uh, apparently this was a very, uh, yeah, uh, local kind of um, uh, notion. But uh, at the same time, it, it's... Uh, it's you can understand it as a um, as a melody that 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 uh, is um, uh, that individuals uh, have uh, nowadays sometimes, but uh, it also of course um, can be seen as a symptom for like larger structures of exploitation, um, not only like ex how we may uh, exhaust ourselves as individuals, but also are exhausting uh, the planet and our cities, and uh, so we were more interested in. Yeah, to look at burnout from a from a yeah, broader perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, so we launched like a, a, a call for fellows uh, to do research on, on this um, subject uh, from from their own perspective. Um, but also in parallel with the fellowship program, um, we are working with the students of the the Piet Swartz experimental publishing master uh, who are developing a project and publication on this notion. But actually, we invited Silvio. Um, uh, to work with them, and he chose a very interesting angle, angle yeah. that he may <laughs> want to explain himself. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there are, well, the angle I try to take uh, with this topic, which, to be honest, uh, I'm not like so familiar with, with the notion of burnout um, in a, in a uh, let's say, medical sense, in a pathological sense. Of course, you can say that uh, there was a, a recent book called Bur Burnout Society, which that doesn't take it as uh, pathological. But so. Uh, that it takes it more on a society level rather than, a, let's say, a psychological individual. Yeah, individual. Level. Yeah, well, yeah, you can say, yeah, there is this attempt to see like uh, uh, contemporary maladies as social. Uh, because issues, I yeah. would say, for example, in this whole doer ideology, yeah. I would think, I would, I would oh, think, oh, it's gone. <laughs> I would think, no, it's gone. Oh, it's back. <laughs> um, I would think that um, it actually, um, yeah, it works these uh, burnouts in hand, that it, that it would be like the perfect feeding ground for, uh, for burnout. But 
I mean, there yeah, was a there is even a, a celebration of burnout somehow yeah. in that, uh, it, and, uh, like the uh, girl who was eating coffee for lunch. Yeah. Yes, it, I didn't show like the the, the spot on uh, the ad on uh, YouTube, but uh, the funny thing is, it, it has the same tone. But there is a scene in which like death itself appear with uh, with uh, you know like in the traditional. Uh, with a black hood yeah, and, yeah, and the, and the, the thing, yeah, which yeah, yeah. So there is uh, between the lines this this uh, yeah like this more more tougher feeling like this this uh, yeah uh, t t t thanatological like feeling of uh, dealing with death and also like putting death aside the thought of death through hard work like uh, no like to forget about uh, finitude of our existence through work. No, mm -hmm. but anyway, it's not what we will go through with the season because you're like, not taking more positive note on burnout, strangely enough. You know? Yeah, yeah, which is okay. not this. It's um, yeah. the notion of life hacks. Life hacks. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, and it's a way to look at burnout more on a technological side. And by te I, I, I see, I say technological in a very, in a very broad sense. I mean, like the techniques to uh, work on the self, to produce new habits, to. Uh, to, to optimize yourself or to reinvent it, which can be on one side something very positive that allows you for leisure, but also a new burden of like new management on yourself, a new sort of boss of yourself. So it's up, it will be up now to the students to decide which angle to take on this and uh, we will see soon. Mm -hmm. oh, very interesting. Is that something you were thinking about as well, Sonny? Like maybe not burnout, but is there like something that scared the people you interviewed um, also, is it, is, it, is it a notion that also lingers in your work? Maybe the limits of um, what is humanly possible or limits of machines or, or yeah, technology. Yeah, I think it was the starting point of the project and then I turned more in the direction of automation and technological How development. How do you mean the starting point? The yeah, I, I mean, I started, the, I had one year time for my research and like coming up with the output. And I started with also entrepreneurship and actually a lot of topics that <laughs> popped up tonight. Um, also, yeah, labor in the design field and value. And yeah, and then I, I think I was kind of fascinated by yeah, like the combination of, yeah, it's, I think I came to automation through the universal basic income, which was kind of, yeah, like the topic of burnout and multitasking and yeah, like working in the design field. Then I came to the universal basic income and then there was like the bridge to, to what I showed tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe how, how far do you think, um, yeah, we can look into the, to the future um, now. How do you, how do you see the future of work? <laughs> no. I don't know, but yeah, Katia, you're another. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking. I found it also interesting that you were sh uh, showing that the, the products are, are like um, are very present on this website, but you don't see the actual labor uh, behind it. Um, and um, I also agree with with uh, with what was said is that. Um, when we speculate, speculate about the future, you see like either this more um, optimistic or pessimistic uh, views maybe, but then you also, um, um, there's all these sort of invisibility machines that are, that are hiding the actual work or um, that is not often seen. So in order to speculate about the future, maybe we have to um, look more carefully about um, yeah, what is happening now and, and um, where we can actually intervene, also in other spaces, like for instance, this, pet this patent system, or um, uh, yeah, uh, how how uh, labor is fragmented on online platforms, and to to have a closer look at what is happening now in order to speculate about the future. Mm -hmm. Also, how do you see it? Um, what changes are you anticipating for? Maybe also in your own. Uh, yeah, design practice or um, yeah, are you somehow well eager or worried about the future? I think I'm neither worried <laughs> nor <laughs> looking forward. Um, 
no, is it I something that's, that, that is on your mind or not really? Or are you just uh, fascinated I, by, the, by what is happening? I think I'm more curious mm -hmm. and I would turn it around what you... I agree, but I, I think I would um, ask everyone to speculate more about the future in order to see and reflect on what's going on right now. And also, I think, yeah, every one of us has to become more active and um, be more involved in all these processes because I think that's the only way how we can actually shape this future. And then it's very open if it's dystopian or utopian or something completely different which doesn't match to these criteria. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Silvio. Hard to... Yeah, you don't, I don't like the question say, of... No, I, I don't want to say pessimist. something. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, as I said, I mean, my... my, my uh, I, let's say, I find uh, the present more interesting mm -hmm. than the future, uh, just because it has, like, uh, bits of, uh, of the future, but also bits of the past, and it feels like more and more um, this, like, uh, present we live in is, like, uh, connects back to mode of, uh, of power, uh, like, work relationship that are, like, w w felt obsolete and now are back in place, like... Uh, For example? Uh, well, I mean, again, like, if I, I have to make a couple, like, to, to point again to the, to the to Indian guys, mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, hired by the, by the blogger, I would say that there is, like, Totally obvious, like reminiscence of uh, of a past that uh, we like nobody wants to repeat. Mm -hmm. um, so so yeah. Well, um, one thing I I, I I would say, like if, if we have to try forecasting, uh, I'm skeptical about the possibility of uh, automation to be helpful. Uh, and my the basis of this skepticism is the fact that uh, uh, let's say. Um, home appliance, which were supposed to make like uh, our daily life quicker, like for example, uh, like the, the washing machine, etc. They apparently, I mean, from what I read, mm -hmm. they didn't decrease uh, like homework, uh, homework, I don't, well, yeah. work, domestic, yeah. Housework. Work, uh, domestic, yeah, work, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, home, yeah, houseworking at all. Uh, so I, I don't see how full automation would go to, yeah. To, to make a difference. Also because they, I assume that the value extraction would be 101, as in the beautiful Autonomous project, but would be, uh, there would be an intermediary extracting, siphoning the, the added value, as it happened in man manufacture. Yes. Thank you all. I think we have maybe time for one, no, maybe other questions, actually. Let's go quickly to see Vida, what Vida is doing. <laughs> Take your time. Okay, no, I was I was trying uh, trying to draw a robot who was walking the dog and the human. <laughs> dog and human walk. So, uh, the choice in positive, negative, in between, and no opinion. I think I have no opinion even after tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, it's your computer. I think uh, it's not interesting. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, burnout, I'm close to it, I think. No, no, it's not true. Uh, is it a lemon? No. No, it is actually a smartphone that's on fire. Oh. It's a candle. Man. And it's a candle. The, the man is a candle. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the notion, I think, is great about searching enlightenment, but then uh, posting it, in, it on Instagram. Uh, there's usually no Wi-Fi on, in the Himalayas. Uh, here are two uh, Stexkis looking at a burnt out match. I don't look at it, it's a sign of the times. Uh, as, as if uh, burnouts are contagious. I think so though. Uh, and then the parallel lines during the talks are abundant, uh, as, as are the chairs. <laughs> I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Vida. So. Then, uh, yeah, this was AZ night. Um, very, yeah, and you all said thank you well. Um, I just switched, I can't even have that, I'm going switch. Um, yeah, big thanks. Oh, I'm going to begin it Thank you well. Otto Nie van Reuder, Katja Truijen, and Silvio LaRusso. And natuurlijk ook Wiede Verknokke. Ook bedankt aan het publiek, aan jullie dat jullie er waren. En namens de EZ Night Partners, Z33, Architectuurwijzer, PXL, Mad School Arts, School of Arts, Lucas School of Arts, Campus Seamine. En 
Universiteit Hasselt, Faculteit van Architectuur en Kunst, die allemaal samen deze avond uh, mogelijk maken. Dank aan Thomas voor de planten. Ik moest een zekere Thomas bedanken. Um, en goed om te weten, dus beneden um, Willem Kissenbeek en Noortje de La Heer hebben dus vanavond in het café zijn ze bezig geweest met hun slechte wifi. Um, zij een, aan een beeldessay en dat kan je straks gratis meenemen. Um, er is een risoprinter en je kan aan de bar wachten terwijl ze een kopietje maken. En ja, aan de bar kan je dus een drankje bestellen, uh, want iedereen krijgt een 2 euro uh, bonnetje, denk ik. Of um, ik geloof van wel, krijgen ze muntjes, krijgen ze... Zeker, oké. Okay. En ook Josephine van Beek is uh, achter in de zaal present en zij schrijft een tekst gebaseerd op vanavond die we zullen kunnen lezen op de Facebookpagina en uh, de Z33 Research website. En last but not least, ik hoop jullie uh, binnen een maand terug te zijn, Z zien 6 november zijn we er weer met een nieuw thema, um, diverse perspectieven. Um, ja, er zijn sinds 2015 ongeveer anderhalf miljoen mensen in Europa aangekomen als vluchteling op zoek naar een nieuwe thuis. En um, tijdens deze AZ Night zullen we makers uitnodigen om de verhalen van nieuwe, nieuwkomers um, en verhalen over migratie tastbaar te maken. En hoe vertel je die verhalen? Op welke manier doe je dat? En uh, terwijl u dit zaal verlaat, jullie horen het al, um, horen we weer naar die, luisteren we weer naar die songs for hardworking people. Dus ja, tot ziens hardworking people. Uh, ik zie jullie zo meteen aan de bar. Tot volgende maand. Dank jullie wel.